Alright, so this is RubberCityMotoring.com YouTube channel, back here with the Impala. Um, yeah, we're on Torque Head, I think this is video 3, 4, something like that. Next step though, if you watched the previous videos, we kind of did a teardown, uh, the first few components that are installed. This video is going to focus solely on dialing in your torque head sensing unit, the one that goes in place of the OptiSpark and then you have to configure the sensors onto the hub. So what I'm going to do here is kind of give you a breakdown of all the pieces parts and then I'm going to sort of show you how my install goes and then from there, um, you know, that's, that's where this video is going to pretty much end. This is just a quick one. I mean, I'm trying to make this where it's nice and simple and whatever step you're on in the process, you can kind of refer back. So um, this will be the, like I said, the sensor adjustment slash setup. So let me show you what I got sitting over here and then we'll move into install. So what you got to do for this next part is you're basically lining up the torque head sensor unit, which is what replaced the OptiSpark uh, with the new hub. And they give you this trick piece that basically, let's say you're looking at this from the front of the car, it goes like this. The, the stud goes on the passenger side. These holes right here are elongated, so it's basically going to give you some room forwards and backwards uh, to get it perfectly lined up. To line it up with the hub, they give you this tool, which it's got like a, a basically a groove in it there, and that perfectly fits on the new hub on the wheel. So what you do is you set this down right on there. You're unbolted. There's a couple bolts that go in here, and that's the what the Allen wrench is for. Set this down in there. You take your tool here, and you put it into there. And I'm going to show you this over on there. So it perfectly fits. I mean, this isn't like a, a cheap setup. You can tell, like, there's some a lot of thought put into this. You put this down all the way till it lines up perfectly on the hub. It kind of is a tight fit. You push everything flat. And then from there, you tighten those bolts down. What that did is it set up this piece on the sensing unit. Okay, stick with me here. From there, you're, you're locked down and ratcheted down there for this guy, which is, this is really the sensor. This is what's doing all the work. This installs right like that, okay? Now there's no wiggle room in this anymore because you've already set up basically the piece that this, that, that the gold part is bolting to, which is this. So let's just get this out of the way. Once this is bolted down, they give you this yellow feeler gauge. The feeler gauge, or the, the, you know, basically it's a little spacer checker. Sorry, I bumped my camera there. You have to put it in between the gold piece here and the hub. And it you, you want to be able to clear it. If it doesn't clear it and it's too tight, you're, you're given a set of spacers here. Okay, so you basically go through and you add a spacer if you need it. Check it again. If it's still too tight, you add another spacer and keep going. Now, the spacers work very simply. You unbolt this guy, which is this nuts for. Take this right here. I'm just demonstrating here because it's a little bit easier to see. So there's my spacer on there. And there you go, like so. Okay, goes all the way flat. Bolt that down check for spacing again. So what I'm going to do here is get this going. I'm going to uh, attach everything and I'll show you sort of step by step as I do it, what it sort of looks like. But this, you know, I'm once again, this is new to me, but at the same time, um, if you follow the instructions, it's not that bad. But, uh, you know, this is kind of an important step. Once again, each step is just as important as the last, but you want to make sure you do this right. I recommend you know washing your hands, making sure all you don't have any debris on the mounting surfaces there, no excess garbage, anything. Just make sure everything is done right and clean, and you just make sure you lock this down in a proper, good way. It's the best piece of advice I can tell you, because once that hub is seated in its right place, 
it, you know, it's, it's pretty much going to just do itself here if you follow the instructions. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So excuse the angle here, but uh, this is kind of looking straight down um, from basically that's the throttle body right there. This is passenger side inlet, driver side inlet, just to get your, your bearings. Obviously the front of the car is well, this way. So this is that piece I just showed you. Remember the stud goes on the passenger side. So what you can do is you can just set this down and you can tell it's you have slotted holes on there and I'll, maybe I'll see if I can zoom this in in post but uh, you have enough wiggle room where you have some play in this to depending on your hub and where this sits and all that good stuff um, it, it's it's a slotted hole for a reason now what you do next is you take that tool I showed you before here um, and that groove is specifically in there for the torque head hub it goes around that sensing wheel that's on the back of the hub which is a pretty important part of this whole thing so what you do is you take this tool which it's legit I mean it's not some chintzy thing it's a piece of metal that you know it's been cut done right for this CNC however they made it in you need to save it after this so don't go hammering on it or something this should all be done by hand this part you slide it into the hole here but it has to get this notch or this slot perfectly on the hub and it seats all the way down flat. So if I put it on here, it goes in the hole, get it lined up and it's right there, I'm lined up and now what I need to do is get it the final push down all the way. So it pushes and sandwiches everything down. That includes the, the, the plate that has the stud on it with the holes. You're seated down on the hub and that's it. And like I said, I used my finger, my thumb to push it down and I am locked in there tight. Next thing that you have to do now that that's there is you're pretty much dialed in for where the sensor needs to go as far as front and back orientation. Uh, mine came pre-assembled so I did have to take it apart, the, the screws that hold that down. It's basically a, a screw with like a little lock washer type thing on there and an Allen wrench. You tighten it down on there and you uh that's pretty much it it's locked in and it's in place so i'm going to get this tightened down and then we'll move to the next part here you don't want to go crazy with these i mean both of mine have finger tightened all the way down i'm going to check my tool there make sure it's in there good and then from there it is just an allen wrench to snug them up One thing I thought interesting, they said these screws will never come off unless you do an engine teardown. So these are permanently there. I'm assuming with the lock washers on there, they are going to be pretty much stuck in place, which is good, good by me. I evenly torque them, went back and forth, just in case. You know, you don't want to over torque one side. Do one final check here. They aren't big bolts, so you don't want to go crazy. Get a little snug there. Check this last one here. I feel like uncoordinated tonight. There we go. So that's it. Um, that is installed my tools still in there so now what your job is to do is to get this tool out of here which mine's pretty tight every time I've checked it so it takes a little bit of wiggling and pulling and just sort of you know getting it out of there once again I'll remind you don't throw this tool away you might need it someday put it in your toolbox put it in a baggie with a label just so you don't accidentally lose it or do whatever alright next part is the sensor itself Okay, same angle, same position. I haven't moved the camera in any way. This is no trick photography. Um, we are moving on to the sensor. Now the sensor is an interesting one. Basically to me, I mean, this, this is, uh, you know, I didn't design this kit. I don't, obviously, you know, this, this is something I just got. So some of this stuff blows my mind that this just bronze, you know, plug, whatever you want to say, does so much, but it does quite a bit. So 
some engineer somewhere was pretty smart, whatever this does. Um, but it, we, we know it's going to pick up the new hub, this, the reluctor wheel on there, obviously. It just blows my mind that just this piece of metal down here can do something. Anyways, that stud that's on here right down there, that is for this mount. So without using any shims that I showed before, you start without the shims. You put it on there like so. Let it seat all the way down and then tighten your nut. Then from there, we're going to check with our feeler gauge and see what happens. Um, I'm not using any crazy tools here. This nut, roughly, it seems to fit about 11 millimeter wrench, so I'm going to finger tight. Everything is new, so it just goes right on nice and easy. I am going to give it a pretty good torque, just so I know. That's about as good as I'll be here. Let's try the feeler gauge. Seems as though it isn't clearing. So that means shims. All right, let me go get my shims and I will be right back. All right, so I have my shims and if you follow the instructions, it actually says it shouldn't clear, the feeler gauge shouldn't clear without a shim. So I guess we're doing good here. So I'm going to break this bolt loose and I'm going to finish it by hand. I'm sorry if this sounds so slow and drawn out and like I'm talking to a two-year-old. I'm just trying to uh, get this just right so you understand it. Plus I do have a three-year-old so sometimes I explain stuff like that to her. Okay, one shim on there. You can see it right there. There it is. Catch it on the stud and then get it right there. Now we reinstall our gold sensor. We got another thing to go around, but once you get it lined up, it drops right on there. Redo our nut. Finger tight. One of the things you want to make sure is your nut, your shim and sensor are fully seated. The sensors do have a slight, because they're thin, I'll show you here, they have a slight bend in them, so you want to just make sure it's flattened out nice and tight. So give this a little bit of torque, snug it down, about where you would expect it to be if you're driving the car, because you want to get this air gap right here. Take my feeler gauge, Still a little tight. So now what you do, pull it back off, you add another shim. All right, so that was my final lockdown. Uh, three shims is what it took. So you can see, here's my feeler gauge. Now the instructions say if it's a little tight, that's okay. Doing a little research on this though, I did find that uh, pin drive opties roughly three to four shims and spline drives roughly three shims. And that's all relative on your engine and different things, but um, that's direct from Torquehead. They told me that um, kind of uh, history. One of the most interesting things um, and why I decided to make this a specific video is this whole process that we just went through is what makes the torque head so reliable and a very, very high success rate on the first key turn. Uh, that centering with the tool and then the uh, air gap being another important piece. So between those two things, you're guaranteeing that this is the gold sensor that I was talking about is exactly where it needs to be. One of the things I thought was funny, I asked him, I said, what are the odds that the hub here, it's so close. I mean, this is, you look, this is really just, I mean, it's like a piece of paper with some laminate on it. That's all it is. I was like, what are the odds that this, the hub spinning, you know, at 6,000 RPM hits the sensor and they were like, it moves, if it moves at all, way less than what this thickness is, which blew my mind. I mean, they get down to the, the thousandths of the inch and you know, it's, which you have to be with this stuff, but that stuff just kind of blows my mind. It's why I'm more just like to put this 
kind of parts on than ever th even think about coming up with this stuff. Very, very cool though, and um, that's it. We're done. So let me show you here. Uh, let me move the camera. I'll show you a final look at this. So there it is, giving you the up close look at the sensor we just did. Like I said, bolted down, locked down, and you should not have to touch this unless you uh, pull your engine apart. It should be good to go. So that's that. And really, um, that's pretty much it on the torque head end of things up front here. So let me tell you what's coming next and uh, what uh, what we got going here. So that wraps up the uh, whole sensor, alignment, air gap, everything like that. As I said before, do not forget, save this tool. It's important. I mean, it's not, it's, it's, you're not going to find this at, you know, uh, low as someday. So keep it. Um, and it's the same bag if you have them, not that you'll need them. I did have two spare shims. I'm going to keep those too. Now, as I just said, this is a super important step. It's what makes the torque head like 99% reliable as in these, there's, there's very few instances where the torque head doesn't work that first hit of the key. So fingers crossed we should be there. I mean, we're, I'm following everything that the instructions say, walking through it, doing the research and uh, getting it locked down as best as I possibly can. Um, I'm going to take this for, uh, to put out there, do you have questions on this? Are you curious, you know, what, what it's like, you know, you know, something that wasn't answered in the video. Maybe you're curious if it's really as hard as it looks, or maybe you're asking, is it really as easy as it looks? Or maybe you just want to know something that, uh, you know, that maybe I don't know and I could find out for you. Comment below, hit subscribe if you haven't already, follow along with this. The Impala is here to stay for a while. It's not going to be for sale. It's not going to be, you know, it's, you know, it's going to continue to have things posted on here. So if you like this car, you like seeing what we got going here, then subscribe for sure. Hit a like on the video as well. Torquehead.com. Check them out for this kit, um, you know, and, and give them a call or give them, shoot them an email if you have, you know, more in-depth questions pertaining to like your specific application. Um, Next video though. Next video we're going to talk, uh, I got a few things to talk. PCM, got to talk about plug wires, got to talk about the wiring for this thing. Um, and then, you know, from here though, it's, it's a lot of just reassembly. You know, I got to put the water pump back on, got to put my new hub on there, my, or my new uh, crank harmonic balance on the hub. So this is home stretch stuff though. We're getting there, man. We are so close. So Thanks again for watching. I appreciate the interest. Like I said, comment below if you got something going on, you got a question on this or anything like that. But uh, all right, see you next time.